there comes a point where as adult as we are becomes uh, uh, or become uh, careless speakers. That's true. You know, yeah. and you say, "How uh, yeah, like, uh, You I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong you know? with you? Hey, sign your raro zibabol. That's one al papa. No. Appreciate King Wana what's a maker. Yes. He's got only his uh, future yeah. to aim at. He was a Chiefs fan, <laughs> card carrying member. Yo yo. And I was. I had trials with swallows for a week. Uh. And he said, I got the message. <laughs> That's, That's how funny. That's how I did in continue. But yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's how I didn't continue playing for swallows. Then I went to Chiefs. The Duba Bates. The Duba Bates. King King David Studio Podcast. I'm not one for long introductions, uh, but I feel like I should give you one today. Go men go. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Today is a star. It's very in that Max Maponyani. In my world, is one of those guys that we grew up as in Tuana, following his career, modeling around his career as, as wannabe soccer players. So, uh, before Dr. Kumalo, there was Max Maponyani. I'll tell you that much. There was a guy even in Mami Lord in Erimita Max. He ran like you. He used to wear uh, that white band like you. He had all the, uh, you know, the personality traits of, of Max Maponyani. I'm very lucky today. And I don't know what's happening with my luck, eh? Hey, can I super start a sports match at here? So today we have Max Maponyani. Rewe, Lekaina. I'm privileged uh, to have been invited by you. No way. Mo. <laughs> I, I've always been watching the shows and uh, I thought, yes. wow, you're doing a good job. I appreciate it. Eh? I, I must tell you, when the thought of, of your name came about, coincidentally, you also inquired. And but for other things altogether. And I remember thinking, wow, I think prayer is an important part of our lives. We should always pray and you get the things you ask for. Yeah. In fact, one thing you don't know is that uh, I would listen to you a lot on uh, Metro. Oh, yes. Uh, on, on Radio on, on 2000. Radio, yeah. In fact, on Radio 2000 in the afternoon. Yes. yes. Yeah. Wow. So... Mm -hmm. Jeez, man. You know, I, I was having a chat now with, with a very senior uh, official in government and he's telling me about a song I played. And sometimes we don't realize, or you're sitting alone in the studio, you don't realize yeah. how many people and who is listening. Mm -hmm. And anyway, that's why it's such an important job for us to always be careful of the things we say. <laughs> so, but thank yeah, you again thank for coming. You, thank I appreciate you. it. Yeah. You don't come across as a shy person. Uh, but I realized, because even now, when I was driving here, you had stopped on the side of the road and asking for directions. And there were these gentlemen who were taking pictures with you. You seemed like you did not want to be there, but you had to be there. Yeah. What is your relationship <laughs> with that side of your life, the celebrity part of your life? It, it's just one of those that I would say it's the fortunate, unfortunate part. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fortunate comes in a sense where you could be helped and uh, people just with an open heart. That's true. But uh, the unfortunate is also the lack of understanding of the agency. Because yeah. when you're late, they say, I just need a picture. Are you in the hood? <laughs> you know? And uh, unfortunately, you cannot say, I'm in a hurry. I'm in yes. a hurry. You know? yeah. So... You can't, you can't, you can't say no to those moments. Yeah, because you yeah. got out of the car, and these are security guys. You can't say chance Yeah, but as I say, also it's uh, it's nice to be important, but yes. it's also important to be nice. Ah. Yeah, I feel important. But how nice are you yes. to other people? Yeah. And uh, these are the people that don't hurt you, don't mean any harm. Mm. And it, it has happened since, what, 1981? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 81, 2023, still the same, and you think, it's fine. Back in those days, we didn't have cameras easily like that. What did they want then to Ooh. now? It was very interesting. In fact, I was uh, smiling last time when I was looking at the transition. Mm. Gone are the days when uh, I was a youngster playing for Chiefs and after playing Swallows or Pirates, yeah. the stadium could be packed. I mean, that uh, Orlando Stadium would be packed. Mm. But uh, I would be richer than what I was earning Tell from me. the team. Yeah. So I was earning 600 rand. What? At Kaiser Chiefs when I started. Okay. And uh, 1980? 1981. Yeah. And uh, every week, especially the big games, mm. 
after the game, you go to the shower, you've scored, you are this young star, yeah. young sensation. Mm. And as I would be carrying the bag, that's th those are the days when money was cheap. Mm. The guys would be, obviously, they would unzip it, mm. not stealing anything, but putting money. In you your know bag. what was the biggest uh, denominator? <laughs> yeah. 10 rand at the time. Jeez. But all those five rands and the 20, two bob. You remember yes. the two bob? Le, le yes. That two rand. That yeah, two rand. Yes. 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 They would hoi all in the bag. But when I get home and count this money, it's either close to the salary or even more than the salary. <laughs> Imagine that. And then that face uh, just uh, vanished yes. because money started getting expensive. Of course. As time goes by, mm. you know. And then came, oh, then it was uh, in parallel with uh, the moment of the autographs. Oh, yes. Oh. But I mean, those days you would have two cues. And you, by the table, one queue comes this way, the other queue comes this way. And you sign this side and you sign this side. Just to speed what up What are things. you signing? Papers? You're signing papers. <laughs> but then companies, uh. if you are fortunate to be sponsored, then companies would uh, print their brand ah. and you sign on that. So maybe they, they, they would make, yes, yes, they would make maybe your face and cut berry move. M and maybe even that size. Yes, you know, something exactly. portable yes. or something that you can put in the house somewhere. On the wall. A4 size was the popular one. Yes. And then I got to be sponsored by Adidas then I would always uh, had a batch uh -huh. of those Adidas ones for random people on the, uh, in the streets. But here's a joke I'll never forget. In yeah. fact, there are two Moments of the past that I'll never forget. Yeah. So this old ladies joined the queue mm. in a mall and I was signing. And when it came to their turn, I signed for them. Mm. And they said, yeah, no, one I carry on <laughs> And I'm thinking, but can somebody explain to the old ladies <laughs> that they shouldn't have been here the whole day? <laughs> That's why I asked, well, why do you sign? Because the concept still doesn't make sense to me. So there's someone right now who has a signature here, Max Mapoyane, somewhere in their house. Makes a difference. It's I'm a sure lady. others have kept them. Of course. Yeah, yes. But uh, this one was an embarrassing moment. Yeah. This particular guy comes all the way from uh, Bloemfontein mm. and... I was living in the south of Joburg. Mm. So the nearest shopping mall was uh, that one in, uh, in Southgate. Southgate, yeah. Because I was down the road from Southgate. Yes. So typical. Holiday time, people are coming from all angles. Mm -hmm. And you think, okay, all parts of the uh, of the country. Yeah. And then this guy saw me and he said, Ha, huh? Max Mapaya. And those were the days when I was still playing. Mm. And then I said, hi. But as nature was calling, mm. it wasn't allowing me to stop. <laughs> and as I rushed into the toilet, yes. this guy says, please, please sign. He's got a piece of paper. Yeah. He's got a backpack and it had a pen inside. Mm. He took out that and he hoid it on <laughs> the door. <laughs> Go toilet. Go toilet. Sign a more. <laughs> sign a more. And I thought, he said, no, uto vanish after this guy. But I can't. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't believe that yeah. this moment, you know, so it happens, I guess. Yeah. Wow, yeah. you've been famous for a long time. So as I <laughs> as I say, then came the moment here, uh, the photo. Yes. Let's take a picture. Let's take a picture. Giddy, giddy photo, giddy camera. Giddy, giddy, not these at, ones. At the times, it was one of those where uh, you would say, I'm hanging around. Mm. I hear that Max will be in the area. Yes. And then you have one of those Kodaks where oh, yes. you just uh, take a picture and then it oh, that's, yeah, yeah. And then you Polaroid. charge the person who is yeah. taking the picture oh, with me. Yes. If it was me, obviously, I would have spent a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Polaroid. <laughs> where, Polaroid. Where yes, yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, and they now stand in another queue to wait for their pictures wow. and then he's asking now where can now and you know yeah man you know Jeez. and those were the moments then came the let's take a picture mm, now with uh, these phones then it's even worse it's a selfie which sometimes i feel i don't like this because sometimes it doesn't come out nice mm, mm, and mm. Uh, my yeah. head will be longer <laughs> and face will be broader yes. but it's all that that you saw the security just is now. doing now just now yeah. oh, on our drive here yeah. you know you started playing soccer as a young kid very very young mm. high school young no even younger at the age of six 
At the age of six, I was at Moruta Tuto, yeah. lower primary school. Go, go, go Middlelands, Middlelands. Go Zone One. Yeah. I was born in Middlelands Zone One. Let me start from the top. Yes, I yes. was born in Middlelands Zone One, Mama Silanoka Street, the first street of Middlelands. Okay. And Zone is the first zone of Middlelands. It's still called the same <laughs> name. Still the same, the yeah. same name. Yeah. And uh, then. I also was born in the family of four, four mm. boys. Okay. And uh, well, no, like I, I, I'm, the, the, I'm the third. Okay. I'm the third of the four. Yes. And uh, the, oh, you almost said no, like in the pecking order. Yes. Yeah. That's, it. That's exactly <laughs> how I phrased it in my head. <laughs> yeah. So I was the third in the pecking order. Yes. And uh, we just grew up having fun playing football, mm. all of us. And Who encouraged the game in the in the house? Nobody encouraged it because uh, it was the norm. It mm. was way of life. If you can recall, yes, you were not born, but if mm. you can recall in the 60s, 70s, mm. it was, was the way of 70s. life. Ah. In the 70s. Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, in the 60s, when you are not born, <laughs> it was still the way of life. <laughs> and Before I came. And you, your eyes opens. And you've been just going up and down and going to the kindergarten or nursery, as it's yes, called. And yes. then you come back and you realize, oh, I'm growing up and everybody's kicking the ball around. And you go to school mm -hmm. and everybody is kicking the ball during break. And that's how it all started. Jeez. And then became a township thing also where you come back from school, you still kick the ball around. And mm. then weekends is worse because we would even have stake games yes. where we would have uh, tennis balls okay. at stake. Yeah. You know, tennis ball was expensive those of days. Course. So <laughs> it was a treasure to win tennis balls. I mean, the pride would be a plastic full of tennis balls. Really? Yeah, for a local team. Mm. And th not teams, because when I say team, I'm talking structures. Yes. Local group of youngsters, <laughs> because we would team ourselves by virtue of streets. Of course, of course. So the guys in this street who can kick plays against the guys in the following street, and then you end up having a tournament. Yeah. We, we were organized, but disorganized. Of course. We didn't know what we were doing, mm. but we were doing the right thing. Did you have a, a times where mang mang asar dalla baro dalla mang ongadile? Not much of that, funny yes. enough. Yeah. Not much of that because there would always be too many players oh. in every street. Okay. So he would rather even fight for a place in the same street yeah. team. Yeah. And then the goals would always be those uh, paint tins. Of course. And uh, one of those were when the guy hits the ball hard and you just tuck your head down and say, <laughs> hey, jumpy. Mm. <laughs> you just keep your feet off the ground. Wow. You know? In the house, with now hindsight reflecting back to old people who came before you, mm. who was a soccer player? Surely you're not the first generation. No, no, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, not the first soccer player, but not anyone that I can think of that was really famous. Okay. Not until when... Mm. And then I started looking at the guys. You know, there will be a local ace. Ah. There will be a local so-and-so. Yes, so yes. I would look at those and say, oh, that's my hero. That's my hero. Yeah. You know? And school-wise, where did you go? I went to Muruta Tuto, ah. lower primary school. And then I went to Masakene. Okay. Higher primary school. Oh, can I know only lower primary, and higher primary. Higher primary. Then no. there's a. I came to a grade. No, no, no. Came to a standard. Little form. Little form one. Yes, little form. Yes. You know? uh, somebody said, uh, you know, during our days, our schools had standards. Mm. Now the standards have dropped. <laughs> <laughs> so came to a standard. I like that. I like that phrase. I'm going to use that phrase. Was soccer a thing during high school for you? It was. Yeah. It was. In fact, uh, at higher primary, I was the shortest, if not the smallest, mm. that was playing in the high school, I mean, in the A team. Mm. So mm. they would use the measuring stick. Okay. Ruler, we move on, so yes. and then it would always be height. But I would not even get under that rule. I would just walk past. You know? <laughs> so, a few viewers will know what I'm talking yeah. about. Is that they, don't, they noticed your talent? That's why they fielded you in the, in, the, yes. in the first team? Yes, to be honest. Because coming from lower primary school, then uh, they realized uh, this youngster can try to play. You know? yeah. And uh, <laughs> then got, yeah, getting into the higher primary, it was easy. I was just walking. Others would l really not play yes. because that ruler it's too, would not allow them. Is it too low or too high? No, it's it's low. Yeah. So the guy is tall. 
<laughs> and they didn't have this uh, confirmation of your age. age. So they would just use the ruler. I don't know how it was working. <laughs> but I mean, imagine when you're young and tall. You can't play you can't with us play. because they say, no, your You're age doesn't tall. allow you. No, oh. They say your age, but it's just your some, length. There's some kid you know? who could have been Max Maponyani. He was denied by the ruler. <laughs> by the ruler because of high <laughs> disadvantage. Wow. So that's what happened at higher primary. Mm. And, uh, oh, by the way, the same school that I was at was uh, where Kalima Mutlante was. Oh, really? At uh, Masken. Okay. Last time we had a reunion of some sort and there were some sponsors from the Middle East, mm. and he was there because they called us in generations. Okay. You know, that graced the, yes. the classes. You and know? he was he, he was, was there. Was it a he, generation before yours? He was a yeah. generation before mine. Uh, yeah, that's, so, that's interesting. And, and, and now, I'm curious to know how your, your soccer career evolves in relation to your schooling. Because now, I, I noticed when we research your story, Corona le metriki, where there's a, a soccer is becoming important in your life. Did it at any point disrupt this Max who's supposed to be at school? Not at any point. At a major point. No <laughs> 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 problem. No <laughs> problem. So what happened was, uh, and I'll never forget because uh, I was given the bashing of my life. Mm. So silly me, I'm in the same class with my late brother. Okay. So he... We go into the afternoon class. Mm, mm. You know what apartheid can do? You know, you are 60 or 18 at last, so they yes. divide you into two. So now we were the second group. Mm. So I would come to school early, and then I would play football with the group that will go into class oh, in the okay. afternoon. Yes, yes. And then when the bell goes, then everyone goes and the others comes out. Mm -hmm. I would stay. Because my shoes are the ones that are the poles. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll play with the next group. Oh, no. So I didn't go to school for three months, but I was always at school. You were just playing. We call it the absence of the present. <laughs> I was always <laughs> absent at but in class, present. but I was always at school. But didn't anyone notice? Didn't any elder, a teacher notice? Or a, teacher, a teacher noticed and uh, gave a letter to my late brother to give to the parents. Mm. And I would buy off the letters from oh, him. Boy. So, <laughs> oh boy. So I had fun for the three months. Yeah. Until the teacher now met the father mm. and say, I wonder if uh, Semi has been bringing letters to you. Yeah. But this is what's been happening. And then I was called. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's <the> abstract. <laughs> it was that the family name, the, or was it? It was a family name. Family abstract. name. Abstract. Yeah. When it's up now, you know you're gonna be <laughs> hit hard. Yeah. So I was called, mm. and then he, he was asked to submit his books. Who's that? Your my brother. Your brother. Yeah. Of every subject. Of every day. Cause you are in the same class. We're in the same class. Every subject of every day, for every page, for every work done, obviously I didn't do. Yes. I was hit hard. Because your pages must match. Must match. Yes. And I'll never forget, I woke up, I was bluish. Whoa. I mean, I was just bruised. <laughs> I was more like a crocodile. <laughs> but I looked like a real crocodile. Yeah. I lived up to my claim. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And since that day, I never looked back. Mm. And I was in class every day. Did you understand the lesson? I the understood moment. the lesson. Yeah. But uh, it's one of those things that are driven by childhood. And you don't see anything wrong no. until you realize that uh, that beating mm. has really shaped or molded you yeah. to be who you are today. You know? There's a lot said about uh, corporal punishment. There's a lot said about raising your hand to a child mm -hmm. in, to, in the lives we live now. Yeah. I, I know for sure, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm younger than you, I grew up in a time when there was a trap. Mm. There was a teacher uh, at high school who used to how fit like one minute past eight? Or ten a car? Quah! 
Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. And and that's the era we grew up in. Yeah. Mm. Kids today don't even know what we're talking about. Yes. Mm. What do you say to that? Because you you make reference to it as something that molded you. And and some would say, okay, abuse. And and I sometimes I'll admit <laughs> think it wasn't so bad. <laughs> sometimes. It, it, it wasn't so bad based on what one came out to be. True. Because you become a product of your upbringing, whether we like it or not. Mm. So how negates will happen, it will come back to bite you. Yeah. Because I know children of the rich mm. who can always look back and say, My father was, yeah. but who are you? You know? Yo. That kind of that Yo. kind of thing. So I'm glad that uh, one was not driven to that situation. Mm. And I would say, in a short version, mm. I would say, yes. It has molded one. Corporal punishment can be used only when it's not severe and it's not out of hatred and it's mm. not about aiming to kill. Yeah. You know, because it can be harsh. As you can, it. I mean, it, it can also be wrong mm. because it can teach children some hatred of some sort. Yes. You know, or violence. But do it or violence, but yeah. do it out of love. Yeah. And to be honest, <laughs> my songs uh, got one or two, <laughs> but not often. Yes. yes, yes. You know, but I always treated them differently to the mm. way I was brought up because it means I wasn't angry from how I was brought up. Yes. So then I'm now paying revenge. Mm. I didn't use them to pay revenge. Yeah. In fact, I'll never forget uh, one friend of mine, may his soul rest in peace. One day I sat down uh, the youngster, mm. Maps, mm. and I said, uh, you know, the consequences of what you're doing, and he says, you can't be telling a five-year-old about consequences. <laughs> Shapa wanon. Shapa <laughs> wanon. You know, so, so it's like, it's just cause us a key muscle. <laughs> but, you know, it's like you, you try to say, Kimo to understand. Yes. That is why I always marvel at children because I always want to know what they think. Mm. Because they can come up with weird questions and, yeah. uh, and think, big, huh? questions big questions, big questions, yeah. and you think, huh? <laughs> one, one, I, I, I struggle you know? to see them as as children. Yes, uh -huh. because I see the man that in you. Yes, already, mm. and mm. I say I worry about the man. Yes, we, I can't mm. teach, treat you like a children today, mm -hmm. and hope that you turn out to be a good man. Yes, I already see the man in you so early. And I struggle because you can't do that. Maybe doesn't that's why God hasn't work. blessed me with kids yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, but maybe you'll realize you won't even. Uh, yeah. No, you won't even. When the moment yeah. comes. You become friends. You become. You, you deal with situations differently. Yes, yes. It's not a preset. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one thing that's, that stands out about, about you almost immediately. You haven't aged a day. Are you aware of that? No, I've got nah, some science. <laughs> nothing. You haven't aged a single day mm. since the Maxima Ponyani we remember. I know people will compare pictures of you in <laughs> yeah. But you haven't aged a day because you look 39, 40, 41. Even old, younger than me <laughs> for that matter. <laughs> yeah. what, well, has, what has kept you young? Uh, for, firstly, I'm fortunate that uh, my genes are... Correct from the father's side. So he also he had also looked very young. Yeah, at, uh, in his seventies, he looked very young and he could walk. Okay, and you know, up and down to church, <laughs> he would just leave his car or leave his motorbike wow. and uh, walk to church. You know, uh. and uh, he was a boxer, by the way, when he grew up. Not anything to do with football. Mm. And then uh, he was a Chiefs fan, <laughs> card carrying member. Yo yo, and I was. I had trials with swallows for a week. Oh. And he said, Yeah, no, Robert, like I got to go swallows. And I thought, mm, I got the message. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, <laughs> that's how I didn't continue playing for swallows. And then I went to Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> the Duba Bates. The Duba Bates. Yes. You know? So wow. uh, also, uh, after years of training, mm. I was brave enough. It's not easy, I must say, because yeah. uh, to leisure around would always be a pleasure because you look back mm -hmm. and say, 
I've played this game. What more should I do? Who mm. am I proving what to? When you were working out. When you were working out. <laughs> and I was, what, privileged to be resilient? Uh. And I was so resilient to relaxing okay. that I managed to be in the gym all the time. There's a friend of mine, Mpo. When he phones, he says, I hope you're not in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> and it embarrasses me because I'm always there <laughs> when he calls. He seemed to be calling at gym time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, I've been training throughout. That's the biggest advantage. Yeah. And it, it has always been a good uh, sort of attitude. Because I look at the likes of Helmen Kalele, mm. Fanny Madita, the guys who were hard runners mm. at, uh, at, at the club, and yes. Zema Pike, yeah. and yours truly. And we would have problems with uh, teammates. Mm, and why? they would say, oh, man, you're trying to impress the coach. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Only to find that it was the future impression. Yes, <laughs> that's know? all. It became a future impression. Yes. The names that I've mentioned. You bump into those they guys. They look the same. I they know. They look the same. Helen Kelly yeah. looks... So, <laughs> your commitments today will always pay you in the future. That's true. That's the bottom line. It's yeah. just the same as uh, savings. Mm. We were saving. <laughs> you know? So, then while you're saving, you don't just spend it. Yeah. Like, you don't just spend it by relaxing. That's true. <laughs> Spending of this is relaxing. Yes. And then say, yeah, but you know I used to be fit. Because it causes you to now walk around with the pictures <laughs> of when you used to look good. <laughs> you want to show people. You know, and when your hands are full, what are you going to do? <laughs> Put them in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so you always have to say, bo, bon, bon. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so yeah, I, wonder, so I, wonder, I wonder if people do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, when, when on a serious note, mm. uh, there are things that one learned over the years. I bumped into a few guys who are former professionals, the generation before me. And the guy would stop you. I'll never forget this particular one. Obviously, mm. for professional reasons, I won't mention his name. Okay, that's fine. He was, he was going up the escalators. I was going down. He was a professional. He former professional. Okay, player. yeah. He literally walked back uh, with, on the escalators, <laughs> but he kept on going forward. Yeah. It clearly shows you how he was thinking. <laughs> so it means he's lost it already. Yes. But he didn't look like the man that I used to pay to watch. Wow. And that's when I was just studying. And you think... But, you know, you learn lessons from this to say, uh, and you know that uh, he was obviously yes, very handy. Yes, eh? handy. I know, I know exactly <laughs> you know? what you're referring so, to. And it's the reflection of your lifestyle. Yeah. And the worst thing is I had to come back to join him, obviously, as I was going yeah, down, I had to so, join him. Yeah. Because yeah. I got to him and I said, I got to And I got to him and I said, Hey man, look at me. Mm. Look at me. I'm born. Mm. I was there, chiefs. Over uh, among. Mm. And I'm thinking, when I grow up, I don't want to ask people if they remember They me. remember you. You know, so rather take advantage of the platform that you give and God-given yeah. talent and uh, make people remember you. That's a big lesson. I don't want yeah. people to I don't want people to try to figure out. No, I don't want to stop people and find out if they still they remember. They still remember you. <laughs> That's the main Ooh. thing. Because you've changed so much. Yeah, because you've changed, changed so, so much, much because of your acts. That's it. You know? Yeah. Because if you change too much because of your acts, I wouldn't qualify them to say behavior or misbehavior. Yes. But because of your acts. Absolutely. And uh, they will be written all over you. You know, yeah. there are things that you can do in the dark, but you know the interesting thing. But so we see Molly fifteen start like a Molly Exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but what 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 other benefits have this lifestyle done for you? Like in terms of uh, the mind, and obviously the body, the appearance of the body is pretty obvious. But surely there must be more than just appearance. It, it has also helped one in associating with a lot of companies in terms of uh, fitness mm, mm. and the message they want to put across. Yeah. And it also made it easy for me and still making it easy for me as a motivational speaker mm. when I say I used to play 
and these are the lessons that I've learned. Mm. But then I also don't look like after playing, I took the ball with and tag it in permanently. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so those are the things that are more of an, a, 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 a positive. Yeah. And yeah. a positive also in a sense that you still can do what you used to do mm, with yeah. the uh, I mean with the ball yes when you are playing with the youngsters wow. I mean I'm playing in the family five side and obviously I all eyes will be on me when we are trailing yeah. and then, <laughs> you know and then sometimes I always say kana kibana and you try to take the foot off the pedal mm. but then you get aggressive <laughs> and say hey guys we're two down so we just wanted to to score to score you know but you will get into it and fortunately one can still do that you still and, you can still do a lot no, of we, we have an annual family five aside the maponyanes and uh, it, it's it's very fascinating to watch <laughs> yeah. you're saying a lot of your soccer is still in your feet Yes, but I don't want to play a lot of that. Yeah. You know, it's something that I did. So that is why I'm not always into anything that has to do with uh, playing the game. Yeah. I would always do everything around talking the game. <laughs> <laughs> and after playing, I did the talking. In fact, I started doing the talking while I was playing. Mm. Yes, yeah, so... Mm. I prefer that than playing because also the knee, the right knee, it's not the same anymore. Oh. Yeah, because that's the reason I stopped. Yes. After uh, tearing the medial collateral ligament mm. and I had an arthroscopy orth okay. done. Yes. And uh, it was, never, it was the never the same because now I'm putting pressure on the knee that was operated because yeah. I have to jump, compete. When I land, I'm putting weight on the knee. You. When I turn, I'm putting weight on the knee. And yeah. it's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's not So at least same. once a year, so it's not so bad. <laughs> every night yeah. after doing, after playing, the knee was just swelling like a balloon. And then you. I take it easy until Tuesday and then take light training. And then weekend is action again. And I thought, nah, I've got to stop this game. <laughs> you can't do that. No. no. And I thought the worst thing is to force this. And I've played it for 18 years. What am I still wanting to prove? Because mm. I've also been fortunate that I've been honored and be bestowed with a few medals. Mm, mm. So... I just thought, nah, I can't be doing this any longer. Mm. What is that that I'm waiting for? To break a leg? <laughs> what are you still waiting to prove? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Because the coaches must have said, break a leg. I did over the years. <laughs> now I want to break it literally. <laughs> you did <laughs> you know? that. Yeah, so I didn't want to break it literally. Yeah. And then I just woke up one morning and said, that's enough. Yeah. You know, I'm not doing this I'm anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. W was it a, a, a tough decision? No, funny enough. And... I always say I'm blessed of one thing. Mm. You always wonder if, uh, oh, what is going to happen when you retire? Yeah. And uh, will they let me go before I want to go? Mm. But it wasn't the case with me. So I opened a company, mm. Max Mapanyan and Associates, yeah. a year or two before I stopped. And in the afternoons, I had to leave meetings and rush to training yes. with the clients in the office. So it also, to an extent, cost me to be late mm. for training. Mm. And then the coach realized the guy is uh, starting to be too busy, but or he doesn't care because he has been around. Mm. And I thought, no, let me be fair and uh, just stop. So when I stopped, I was busy till late now okay. because of that. Yeah. Because I already had something to hang on to. Mm. But two years before I stopped also, I had already started running marathons. Okay. So, so it's a marathon, I think I ran, what, 21, 24 sure. of those. Oh. <laughs> you know? yes. so, and also to keep fit. To I keep guess. fit. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was a smooth transition. Yeah. And then you would have a normal question for the first 15 years. <laughs> don't you miss the game? Why don't you go back? <laughs> you think, we got okay, in the first 15 years. <laughs> yes, because people don't realize that, no, I might look good, yes. but not. Yeah, you might look young, no, but, but not yeah. uh, good to play. Yeah. You know? so, yeah, the body can't carry nah, you anymore. Can't, yeah. How old were you when, when, when you said, I'm, I'm done now? 36. 
That's a general age of soccer retirement. No, in fact, uh, it's not a, de- a general. Uh, I was fortunate. Yeah. Because uh, normally others would stop at uh, the common age is 32, 34. Even younger. No. Yes. Yes. 32, 34. Yeah. So 36 was really pushing it. Yeah. Hey, look at Ronaldo. I'm looking at, at Ronaldo. I'm looking at uh, Zlatan. A Pepe. Zlatan Pepe at 40. At yeah. 40. <laughs> Who do we have also? Uh, which team? Sundowns as an old player. See, I'm, see, I'm on a novel to play yeah. that almost yes. 40 yeah. even. The late John Shoes Mushuel. Played until yeah. the la- la- latter 40s. days of his 40s. Yes, you know? Wow, that's actually so quite incredible. That's, that's It's very few players who can do that, but I didn't want to push it to that far. But what attributes do you have as a player to end up like a John Shoes, like a uh, Pepe, for example, like a Ronaldo? You need to love the game. You need to be committed. Yeah. You need to be fit. You need to have a good diet. Yeah. The mindset should be in the game all the time. So it's and 100%. It's 100%. <laughs> but then you get others like me mm. to say, but then my mind is no more here. Ah. It's somewhere else. Yeah. And you know, there's something that uh, you may not have heard or may not hear from a lot of players, mm. retired players. There comes a time and age when you start playing football. You get excited. You're sleeping in a hotel. You're flying. Oh, yeah. You know, all those things. <laughs> wow. You get to school because fortunately I was still at school. Mm. The guy sees me as a hero because I was in an aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, but uh, you do that when you get to a certain age. Mm. That's when you realize, ah, I'm tired of this. I don't want to be on a things plane. Things have changed completely. Yes. You have a family. You have young kids. You want safety now as a priority. You have business. So you just want to not be mm-hmm. uh, in a situation where it will compromise yeah. your family. So you now start working hard on other things to look for places that are more secured, mm. where you also are better secured coming back late. That's yeah, true. And I was fortunate that I was doing other jobs, by the way. Mm, mm. And... Uh, I would finish playing and, by the way, right here at F&B. Okay. And then jump into a shower yeah. and ch- change into a tuxedo because I'm MC. <laughs> it's scented. <laughs> you know? Jesus. And in the morning, then I'll be flying to a mine somewhere in Kimberley. To talk to miners. To, to, to talk to miners. Wow. Yeah. You know? So when you do other things, you realize that I can't do this anymore because then I've since left home on Sat- on Friday <laughs> for a Saturday game. Uh. And then on Saturday night, you now have to go to the stew. And then on Sunday, sure. you've got to leave to sleep over in Kimberley for Monday morning uh. to be presenting to the miners. It's too much. It was too much, but it was a good lesson that I even taught my sons. Yeah. And uh, they are living that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is why they but are what, all over the show. What is the lesson? The lesson is never say enough. Mm. Because once you say enough, that's always paradise of being lazy. Mm. That's always paradise of always going to be getting what you put in. Yes. Remember, you get out what you put in. Absolutely. So you cannot want to live like a king, but you don't want to work mm. like a dog. That's you know? it. Yes. So you've got to, your work must match your efforts. And yeah. then the output, people will say you're lucky. <laughs> because you marks no, you're not. Mm. It's what you have done. Yeah. Because little do they realize that no, you might be marks, but where you are marks, you're any six hundred rand. Yes. <laughs> you know? So <laughs> you have to double the effort and do other things. Mm. Diversify and then your life will change. Where do you get that from from your household? There was mommy, daddy and and and, and your siblings. Yes. Who gives that because as as young children and I know you learned this and mm. you just said it, Hore you you have empowered your boys to have the same way of looking at life. Sorry, who, who, uh, when you say way of uh, looking at life also is way of not wanting to be employed, ah, but employ yourself. There you, you know? go. That's, what can we do together? Mm, not can I work for you? That's it. Because that's a, a what is this? A, a, you call it a mentality of mm. a, a, one of those that... Uh, will never want to be responsible. That's true, know? yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but, but what, where did you get it? It's surely not that... Uh, 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 
Kubuela, no. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't it. it wasn't Where that. did you get it? Because we get these things from either our surrounding or the people in our, in our immediate life. Yes, and, and the person in my immediate life who got me to get into that mm. was my aunt. Okay. So my aunt, mean on the mother's side, yeah. uh, moved to London. Okay. And she was working in a laboratory. And she says, life in London here, it's not a bed of roses. Mm. So when she finishes in the laboratory, she jumps into, you know, the trains, mm, how it mm, goes. Mm. I mean, from modern Surrey now, she has to go home and change and then go work for a law firm yeah, and set out the piles for the case or cases <laughs> of the following day. Yeah. I mean, that's when you realize that uh, you can't just get there and live out of those pounds. No. Yeah, so she said, always said, this is always a lesson to say you cannot want to live good mm. when you want to not commit yourself True. into other things. Yeah. Because what do you mean? You mean other people must do good, give you more money for the little you're putting in. Mm -hmm. You put more and you look after yourself. That's yeah. it. So you do learn these things from somewhere. And I thought, I'll try that when I grow up. <laughs> and then I ended up with four or five jobs at some point. Sure. <laughs> and uh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. You know? And by the way, those four or five points, a story that uh, not too many people know, is that I got sick once in my life. Explain that, because because um, we all get sick, sick at some point. Yeah, yeah. but we all get fluviana. <laughs> so when you're talking about once the type that makes you immobile. Yeah. Yeah. So we. I kept on saying, yeah, my aunt said this, Mandela does this, you know, <laughs> Madiba at this age, he can be there, he can be there. Little did I also say, but he's got doctors or medical around team him. around yes. him and all that. So I went to Zimbabwe mm -hmm. to play with Bafana Bafana mm. and then came back from Zimbabwe and then joined Orlando Paris. Remember in Zimbabwe is dry heat mm. and then got to... Uh, South Africa mm. and then we uh, pirates went to play uh, Cape Town Spurs okay. they were second on the lock we were top of the lock so it you went to the coast to play for. Yes. so we went to the coast yeah. and it was pouring mm. the whole weekend then we came back on Sunday night and then Monday morning I left for Francis Town because I was working for Adidas as a rep. Mm. I went straight to Francis Town <laughs> then came back and played here at home on, or over the weekend. And then on that Sunday, I mean Saturday night, mm. I was working with Gary Bailey in Durban yeah. for a, a company and uh, the gig finished at 2. Yes. <laughs> Who signs autographs and smile at 2 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> you know? 2 a.m. Then that morning, we left at 6, yeah. Gary and I, having to come back now because Gary was going to Supersport to present. Mm -hmm. It's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I had to go to SABC to present. Same game, same, probably. Yes. 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 Same, no, he was doing English football. Oh, yes. Then I was okay. doing the local football. Yeah. So that was on a, Saturday, uh, on a Saturday. Then Sunday, home, dry, nothing happened. Wow, mm. I'm relaxed. Yeah. Monday morning. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I couldn't hear, see, or feel anything. Every joint was like there was a gap here. What? Gap here. And I thought I was dying. Sure. I made so many confessions. <laughs> I, can't, I couldn't withdraw them. <laughs> They're made. They're registered. <laughs> I thought I was dying. Sure. And then the doctor was phoned, and then he got there. He says, uh, listen, I'm not allowed to take you in my car. And we'll call an ambulance. Choo -choo. But this is not serious for now. Well, mm. I'll tell you why I say for now, when you are fine. Then he took me to the surgery. Yeah. Choo. The whole day. And he's a doctor friend, by mm. the way. Mm. So the whole day, he kept me in a room in all the hydration, yes, chokes yes, and everything. Yes. And I think I went through two or three bottles of the... The drip. The drip. Yes, yes. And then later in the afternoon, he asked the wife to come and take me. Took me home the whole Tuesday. Yeah. I was recovering and all <laughs> that. Then on Friday, 
He said, you must be feeling good now, and I'm mm. feeling much better. Mm. He says, we need to talk. Good, you. You need to... Oh, by the way, I also had a show on Metro. <laughs> hey, I know. I remember in the, that In time. the evening. Now I know which time. Yeah, when in, the in, the in your career. Is this, and in is. the morning, I was doing the updates. Yeah. So when do you sleep? Because you always have to put together the, the updates of yes, the latest. Of the next game. Yeah. The next, the next, the, 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 next the last game. Yes. yes yeah. you know, and the latest news mm -hmm. uh, across the, uh, around the world. And he said, uh, we were treating you for stress <laughs> and you need to choose you've got to get rid of at least three of these five <laughs> <laughs> that was the most difficult wow. I, uh, moment i ever had I don't know, which three now must fall yes says, you can't go on like this well, someone yeah? something must give so he shows me the results he says now nah, you are lucky <laughs> you know you what? are lucky you were you killing were yourself no i was i was you know yeah and some habits becomes the second nature, you know that. Mm. I got rid of those three, and later I ended up with four. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but fortunately, those are the ones where you don't have to run around. No, yeah, yeah. Remember, like, like, like running those around is the problem. Also, yes. Traveling, getting to the airport, mm. and moving to this, and Gary Bailey Gamula, <laughs> playing again, or sitting until two in the morning. All of those things those are a problem. Things, yeah. Yes. But, but yeah. you would still en encourage ha hard work, multiple income. That lifestyle, irrespective of, of the challenges you faced with it, you still encourage it? I still encourage it because mine was exaggerated. Ah. Right? But if you have one or two, yes. it's fine. If you have the third, it's also fine. Is it yeah. your personality? And again, I, 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 go, I go back to a point you raised earlier about Ronaldo to exert yourself more than you should. Because sometimes that, that's a making of superstar players, generally in life, where when you speak to him, you realize that this guy, when others put in eight hours, he puts in 20 hours for the same thing. Is it something that you have as part of your personality? Or you, you'll do more than you should? I, I should, and I have it because uh, also being a motivational speaker, mm. you have to walk the talk. That's you true. Know? So you cannot be telling people to work hard while you are lying on the couch. <laughs> yes. you know? yeah, it's more <laughs> like you are saying to people uh, you know i'm your leader mm. follow me i'm right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so you you tend to get into the groove mm. and know that uh, it always have rewards yeah. and those rewards will always be making you search for more mm -hmm. all the time and mm. it has always been my way of uh, thinking, my way of uh, talking to people and about way that, of life. and the way of life. Yes. You know? Wow. It's interesting because, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Michael Jordan. Mm. No, no, no. Uh, yes, Michael Jordan, of mm. course, the superstar basketball player. Yeah. Same thing, where he would train at home before he goes to training. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, how oh, my daughter. There are those <laughs> who are happy to do just that training. And he would do it twice or three times in a day. And that's a making of a superstar player. I was just slightly different. Uh, those days, we only have the health and record clubs. Yes. And okay. very few mm -hmm. and apart. Yeah. Now, you live in Soweto. Today, you find Virgin Active just mm -hmm. at Mapanyamo. And, yeah. and now, those days, we had health and records in Bedford View, and the other one was right here in uh, Houghton, mm. and then the other one would be in Rodipo. Sure. So I would uh, train at five in the morning before I go to school, Yo. and then it went on to be before I go to work because I'm still new in this club. Yeah. I want to be in the studying lineup, mm. and once I got into that studying lineup, I never stopped because then it gave me that motivation to say, "Wow, I scored in my debut." So this works. It, it just works. <laughs> and it worked because uh, one came across a lot of challenges mm. of the big, strong defenders. Yeah. And uh, I can proudly say I survived <laughs> in the moments. <laughs> Any name that comes to mind as a big, strong defender? Now they... Oh, yes, yes. Who comes uh, to we, mind? we had the likes of uh, Brumidile. Okay. We had uh, Big Jimmy Jubert. Yeah. We had John Salter. Yeah. We had a guy called Supersonic mm. from uh, Amazul. A bald headed guy, yeah. very strong. He wasn't, he was a footballer, mm. but I don't think he touched the ball. He touched everything in front of the ball. <laughs> and I happened to be a striker not those the days. Not the ball. <laughs> he just goes through you. <laughs> and those are the guys that you will always be mount, uh, mindful of. Yeah. You know? And 
<laughs> when you have the likes of Mike Lambert, mm. who kicks you, and you fall, and he pulls you with the collar. Mm, Remel, say, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> he says, you football of the year, show us what you have. And I'm thinking, <laughs> but now you are, you are, you are strangling me. Mm, you know? wow. And those guys were mean. Mm. And red cards were scarce those days. Yeah. <laughs> so and Getting a red card was rare. No, very yes. rare. <laughs> so the guys would uh, always be hard. Mm. So you think, I have to be in that gym. And then you give back. Yeah. You know? What, what, what were you working out? Strength, speed? What was important for you at that early, early age of your career? We always call them horses for courses. Mm. So as a striker, you work on your speed, 60 meters, yeah. but you also work with the hurdles. Okay. Because you've got to jump the tackles. That's true. And when you on top speed, and this is just one logic that uh, I am not a scientist, but I still want to think of it. When you're on top speed, it's easier to roll over and continue ah, at the same speed. I can see that. But when you are slow, you can remain down and be trampled by this elephant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So you avoid that. Yeah. So you always find yourself in top speed. Yes. And when you fall, you know the referee is not going to give a foul. Mm -hmm. So you get the ball and then continue with the game. Jeez. I see youngsters today, and when I say youngsters, I'm talking about the sterlings of this world mm. who just dive and look at the referee. <laughs> I didn't even know where the <laughs> referee would be because you're looking at the ball and you, how do you know where the, where referee, the referee is when you fall? <laughs> and I always look at them and say, but how did he spot the referee under his armpit? <laughs> you know? So he knew where the referee was before he fell. So it means he wasn't fouled. Yes. You know? wow. So let hear the, the whistle. But don't look for it. Yes. You know? Well, the, the soccer has changed. Yeah. You know this yeah. very well. Mm. How are you discovered? I was playing for Shamrock Special. Yeah. I was playing for a team called Union uh, Fresh Meat, okay. which was <laughs> sponsored by, by a Union Fresh Meat Butchery. I, I can tell. But they took us from Shamrock Special. Mm. And uh, I was with uh, James Mukonazi. Mm. Jeez. Metro Blitz Sitole, yeah. Aubrey the Great Machopela, in the same school. So we played for the same team. This is high school. That's high school yeah. now, Kelokito High School. Mm. And we played for the same team. So this team was dominating schools and was dominating teams mm. over the weekend. <laughs> so we were same just team. same team. Yeah. So we were literally a school club, mm. <laughs> you know, wow. and we... And you won't believe this. I think five or six of us, all turned professionals in the same year. That's incredible. Sported to different teams. Uh. Chiefs, Swallows, Pirates, you know. As the late Stephen Guni mm. was also in our Whoa. school. We, we, we had a star studded school, Josh Makubela. Mm. We, we, we used to play for Pirates too. Yeah, yeah. So we, we had quite a sizable uh, squad mm. that would beat anybody anywhere. Weekend or at school. Weekend or at school. <laughs> and that's uh, how we got discovered. But uh, in my case, I was uh, playing in this particular final mm. with those stars around me of course. at amateur. And uh, at halftime in that cup final, the score was 9-2. What? Yes, 9-2. You were, were you winning or losing? Uh, we, were, we were winning. Okay. I had already scored six goals <laughs> because I was scoring an average of six and four uh, goals on, every on, weekend. On average. <laughs> on average. <laughs> so then uh, I <laughs> was told at halftime that you're not going back. And I thought, huh? for the first time, how can I not go back? There's more goals to score. More goals to score. <laughs> and then I sat on the bench and... The guys were just ignoring me. and I wasn't grumpy. Mm. I was just thinking, why? What is this now? Yeah. And then we went on to win 12-2 12, 12 yeah. <laughs> in the final. And then after the game, then uh, we sat around, uh, congratulated and uh, given the trophy. Yeah. And then they said, uh, last announcement, uh, Mr. Mapanyani is no more going to be with us from now on yeah, because uh, Kaiser Chiefs, wants to sign him next week. <laughs> so, <laughs> didn't I didn't even, know. Didn't even know. I didn't even know. <laughs> so they, who did they speak to? They spoke to, there's a gentleman in our street, mm. uh, Brasten, yeah. and he's the guy that was always pushing 
Kaiser and say, you don't know what you're going to miss. Mm. Now, he was always at home and he was talking to my dad, who is a card carrying member. Of course. <laughs> so of course. that's how the whole deal uh, yes. happened. It's it, it you know for me what what stands out about it is nobody spoke to the player <laughs> they all no, spoke no, no. but no but I was spoke. young anyway no of course because <laughs> yes. you, you were yeah. probably still what 16 16 yes. and that's what angered my late dad because what happened is in that week then in came uh, the Chabedi mm. uh, the Swallows boss then yeah and he he knocked at about nine ish in the evening yeah and uh, he called me outside. And then he says, uh, this is how much we're going to give you. Mm. Uh, tomorrow I'll pick you up from school and come to training. So you're excited. You want to play professional. You're yes. going to. And then only to find that these ones are busy arranging <laughs> the travel arrangements <laughs> these from people. school. Yes. These cheese people are talking. <laughs> are talking. <laughs> and then uh, when I got back into the house, the dad said, uh, my dad says, who's that? I said, it's uh, Pine, David Pine Chabedi there. Solo's boss. Muno hana le respect. Oza na mo aka go batla kwa ntle. I do very easy. I said I do. No, you made it easy. You are I do love hard. But he wants to see me outside. He says, "Don't how doesn't he know or oh, you are a minor?" <laughs> you know? And he says, "For that you're not even going anywhere." Near. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. But but let's go back to the school that had so many great players. Mm. What was it about was it the time, the environment, the teacher? Why is it that your school had so many great players all at one time? It was about the environment. Mm. The principal then, Kit Lehuali, yeah. was a proponent of sport at okay. school. So school sport was uh, his priority, obviously, in education. Mm. But uh, it's one of the few schools, if not the only school, in the townships mm. that would play weird, uh, well, weird at the time, yeah. uh, sporting coats, like? tennis, oh. uh, rowing, <laughs> swimming. <laughs> There's a kumbi that will come and take the guys and take them to the Florida Lake. Wow. <laughs> you know, it was sport, sport, sport. To an extent, there was a policy at school where we would, school starts at eight, mm. but we all have to be there about half past six. Sure. And run everyone, unless if the you have a medical the whole the whole school. school, unless if you have a medical certificate, mm. we all run about what five, ten kilometers, and then we come back. Mm. But you know, I'm still asking myself, even today, why were we not showering? Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> because if you wait for us to shower, school will start no, at yeah. 11. Yeah, it's if not, not 12. It's not possible. <laughs> you know? Wow. Because <clears throat> there's something to be said about that, about school sports. Mm. And you are a clear example. That story you just told now is a clear example of the importance of school sports because we don't seem to have it much to, in today's schooling system. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and you look at it and say, because it's a unique thing. You had four or five soccer players mm -hmm. in one team, and you only acknowledge soccer. There must be other sporting, other codes, sporting codes that produced players or people, people that you don't even know about. No, I know. Uh, Sticker. Sticker, what was Sticker's uh, surname? Mm. He became a professional boxer okay. from school. Because while others are training, like us on the field, mm. then the boxers will be in the wall. Yeah, of course. And then they would move the desks to the back, mm. and then there's a big ring. <laughs> and the guys were exchanging blows. We had about two boxers from our school. You know? Sure, sure. So we, we produced a few guys, but including doctors too, by the way. Of course. <laughs> you know? No, I we need to get a photocopy of that principal and duplicate them all across the country. Oh, yes, we should. Yeah, because yeah. what he produced is quite yeah. special. Mm. To to produce professional soccer players at the age of 16, 17, mm. that is a miracle by any measure. Yeah, no. it, it speaks to Bafana Bafana. Mm -hmm. It speaks to the future of the country. Yo. Yeah, in fact, uh, <laughs> to, to even uh, add to that, that mm. you're saying, you only as good as your opponents. Of course. The likes of Juluga Khadeb, mm. uh, Tabo High School, we played against the, the likes of uh, Dr. Kumalo, Andres Mpondo and his late brother. They were at a different school. They were at a different school, Daliwanga. Yeah. We played against uh, the late Nick Sishweni. 
And he was also, that was when we were representing this side. Mm -hmm. You remember the Transvaal and the Eastern yes, and the Northern? Course, yes. And we were, their school were the ones that uh, were uh, winning that side. Mm. Or Brilikwan. Yes. I, only, I knew them from school. But as your op opponents? As opponents. Yes. Uh, teenage Ladla, Zeblon, Tlapo, Nix, Sikwani. <laughs> Where were those they? They were at, uh, at uh, in East Rand. Yes. And uh, those were the guys that were, their school was also dominating in the East Rand. <laughs> so school football really have produced in the past. And one still say it can produce only if handled well. To be honest, it should be the source mm. of... Uh, uh, of this talent you know in my world radio community radio is regarded as the source mm -hmm. of of the professional league so to speak yeah and it should be the same for for school sports as well mm. where did you get the goman go name somebody must have named you <laughs> yeah uh i can't recall who we were playing at kaiser chiefs and uh, we were leading about three four nil and Teenage Laza, Dr. Kumalo, who'd love to always go to the corner. When they celebrate? When, they, when, we, no, when we're leading. Okay. And knock the ball around oh, and yeah, do yeah. all those all things. Those and uh, all the people that uh, have followed me, they'll know that I wasn't a man of tricks. <laughs> My bag wasn't full of tricks at all. So <laughs> then I would get frustrated because I want to run. Remember mm, the type mm, of training? Mm. I want to run. I want to put the ball in the back of the net. And then... They made a mistake and passed me the ball. And I went straight through defenders <laughs> who were now tired, but also thinking, uh, let them keep it there. Mm. Now, when you run past them, they now wonder, where is this one from? Mm. You know? Everybody's uh, playing. When yeah. I go see us. Then it's in the back of the net. <laughs> and then some fan or group of fans started saying, ah, no, I come and go. And that was the time when uh, there was an advert of... Uh, Sugar gives you go. Oh, <laughs> that's how ah, it started. So go, man, go. Comes from the sugar <laughs> it, campaign. It just came from that. <laughs> that was sweet, isn't it? <laughs> Did you take it well, that name? No, I took it well. Yes. And uh, I like the fact that it's unique. Mm. I don't know any of. You no, know? no, no, no. Yeah, so it was unique and it describes yes. the player that I was. You know, just it, go and score. Even you know? the name, uh, uh, Max, it's not a common name. Yeah, I've unless it's common in, in certain circles, no. but it's not. No, it's not. And I've been privileged for that reason. Because uh, when you see Mark, mm. you see Mark. That's but it. when you see Max, then it's you. It's me. You know? <laughs> yes. And then even the surname is not common. No, that's then true. it becomes uh, different. A, a brand all yes. on its own. You know, yes. It's unlike Tebo Homokwena, with respect. No, you know? no, true. They, yeah. There are so many of those. Yeah. You know? So yeah. then this one makes it easier. Yeah. You know? And that is why, whether you make it or break, you are breaking your name. And say, <laughs> <laughs> You're ruining all for You're yourself. You're ruining all that. Yes. You know? where, where did Daddy get this name? And did, was it common to, to have these special names in the household? No. In fact, uh, you are getting me to go deeper now. Uh -huh. uh, my mom's uncle, Max Mafasia Camela, uh -huh. is or was the principal of a school in the East Rand, in Delmas. Uh -huh. You go to Delmas and you ask for Max Mafamoto High School. It's there. That, that's where the whole connection comes so from. So these are your names? These are my names and uh, we are from a generation Yahuarelwa. Mm. So, of course. Yes, I got so, my names from, yeah. my, from my granddad. So my uncle's brother was Simon Semi. Mm. Okay. So then my late brother Simon said. Yes. So yes, and yes, then you. my eldest brother was named after my father's father. Wow. So you know how it works with no, that. No. The yes. firstborn gets the gets that big name. Max Ma for the original. Uh, the real, even the gonna, real, even yeah. gonna let Twitter account not over the real <laughs> Max the real, Maponyan yes, or yeah. Max Mafa. Yes, surely it was special for him to end up with a school named after him. Yeah, in fact, he was a special principal. He was a special human being, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, his history is very complex, uh, very complex in mm -hmm. a sense that uh, he comes from right in the Bundus, mm. and then he got to the East Rand, and uh, as he was working in the farms, 
he thought he would raise money mm. to go to school. But then he became uh, one of those uh, makhoba, yeah, of, slave. Uh, the slave of yeah, those yeah. Uh, workers, I mean, of those uh, bosses. Mm. And he managed to sneak out. Yeah. But when he sneaked out, he named himself after the good guy that all um, these bosses ah, okay. were listening to. You know, there'll always be a leader. Every boss has a boss. Yeah. <laughs> so because then they realized that, oh, this guy is a manager uh, and uh, he is reliable. Mm. So he had to name his surname after that. So his original surname mm. is not Motlo. <laughs> but for his safety, yeah. they had to associate him with this good guy hmm. who would always make sure that... Uh, uh, yes. You know, there'll always be uh, yeah. <laughs> so there's yeah. one who says, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know. So, so he gave himself, he, he had to give himself that surname to survive. Sure. And uh, he was stuck with that surname, he had to register. Motlou. Motlou. <laughs> that is not <laughs> Motlou. And he carried on with this. Did he ever change it? Because he you know, couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, because already a lord was done, graduated, and yes. he wasn't young anymore. He was stuck with this. So it wasn't only Madiba, the story no, of that's uh, Johan Nelson. Too interesting. <laughs> I was talking about it on the radio today about the the challenges we have with migrant laborers. I played the song Estimela, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, and that And I said, you know, the effects of Stimela say were so profound because mm -hmm. migrant laborers had to come to the uh, mm -hmm. And ma one of the things they did, which we may not see or talk about, is change their names. Yes. And that yeah. was one of the things you did. Because, mm -hmm. you know, this name is not working for me. Let me, do, let me use this one. Yeah. Those are the things that uh, youngsters today don't know. In fact, I wonder if they can remember that, not remember, but where they told mm. that uh, you would always do well during the week whether at school or maybe with your chores. Yeah. And the biggest prize was Oyatropo. Of course. <laughs> you go into town. On a weekend. But they didn't realize that there was frustration when you get to town. Mm. You had to choose and read well the toilets. Ni blanke. Of course. <laughs> Ni blanke. <laughs> and this one is only, blacks only. Yes. You know? And I'm Jeez. thinking, gee, gone no, are they, the days. They eh? wouldn't know that. No. Yeah, we're recording this with my nephew here. And uh, ah, that he knows nothing about yeah. oh, that stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> it's like they don't know what you're and, talking and, and about. And that history is not old. No, uh -uh. it's in your lifetime. It's in my lifetime. And 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 that means it's quite recent for these youngsters to know. Yeah. Is it our mm. fault though that we don't <laughs> empower them with this history? Uh, not not really, because I'm sure we tell them. And I'll speak for a lot of uh, fathers and mothers yes. and elderly people. But mm -hmm. we tell them, but it's not of interest to them. They say, now, where to from here? Yeah, okay. Of which they are right. And, and then because, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why I say I don't blame them because I always uh, try to be solution orientated. Yeah. So, okay, I know I've had the problem. So what's the solution? <laughs> <laughs> we have load sharing. Yeah. And then what? Oh, and then, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Well, let's, let's now go back to schooling versus did anything happen beyond metric? Yes. Uh, managed to, while working. Mm. Oh, by the way. You, working for you is soccer. Uh, uh, yes. I like how you, <laughs> you regard but, it. Because yeah, no. we, we, we say they play soccer. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. Working for you while working, while yeah. working for Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah, while working for Kaiser Chiefs. Yes. I also realized that uh, training only starts at four. Okay. So... I had to look for something. Yeah. So that looking for something was to work for Premier Milling. Okay. And then when I was working at Premier Milling, mm -hmm. in fact, I started working even while I was uh, at Standard 9, Standard okay. 8, okay. because every holidays I used to go to work. I was working for Union Brush Works, okay. it's called. It's right here in uh, Newtle. What do they do at uh, Union Brush they, Works? They were making your mops, your, oh. your, your scrub brush, scrub brush, ah, got you. Uh, mafia, law, yeah, okay. all those things. But I was a trimmer. Mm. <laughs> now you have, you're a big man. You just go <laughs> to this machine and it trims the whole yes. thing, you know. And uh, I was earning... 15 rand per per week okay yeah over That's time very little money. over time would be 19 rand yeah yeah and That's then i stopped and i ended up being a packer at uh, the florida 
Mm. Uh, check us, Saipa, when it opened. That's not far from here. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yes. it was when I felt being a kid is not nice because after uh, caring, you get the money. Mm. On your way back, then you would be marked. Oh, <laughs> from, from, from I can kid, be a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you tried that I as tried well. I tried being a kid yes. also. Yeah. But during school holidays. Yes, yeah, yes. So it's, you just don't want to sit and do nothing. Mm. So then came the post school and remember while well, now in metric I was playing mm. so then the uh chiefs were sponsored by Iwisa. of course so then Till i today had, there are people who see it as Iwisa <laughs> kaiser chief, Iwisa kaiser chief. <laughs> so i worked for Iwisa premier milling <sighs> but uh, on more on the sales side okay so they took us to sales courses and okay. all these and uh, i was working with some great guys uh, that uh, Soccer really, guys? No, uh, reputable guys in the nation. I mean, mm. the guy called my boss was uh, Obri Mukwena. Okay. Obri Mukwena was the head of Release Mandela campaign. Whoa. Yeah, so Whoa. what a funny guy that. Uh, and I worked with him in various companies and in the, <coughs> sat in the board with him. Sure. Yeah, so then he insisted on education. Mm. That is why then I had to go and do the sales courses. Yes. And then... From there, I went to do marketing because then I started to, I got to Adidas as a marketeer. Then I ended up with uh, with uh, sales. And the, the sales at Adidas happened not by coincidence, mm. but because I was sitting in the office and always allocating outfit yes. to Adidas sponsored teams. Oh. So pirates would get this, swallows would get <coughs> this, all the ration and yes, all that yes, for a yes. year projection. <clears throat> Sorry, with uh, cup games included. Of course, so yes. I have that background of sitting there and say, "This is what is going to be." Almost like, needed. almost like a kid <clears throat> manager, but for multiple teams and yes, so forth. Yes, yes, yes. you know, but uh, not in a case of carrying it to the stadium and washing it. <laughs> <laughs> just to clarify. Just, just to clarify. <laughs> so then, uh, it worked for me to be a sales rep. Mm. It was a lot of traveling. But uh, the reason why they came up with that idea is that the boot was endorsed in my name. Okay. But I would play over the weekend, but sit in the office the whole week. Hmm. Then they said, but why don't you go back to sales? Yes. Because then when people see you after scoring on weekend, then they will buy. They buy this, this government gold. And the royalties <laughs> were going sky high. What, was it a decent <clears throat> deal at, at that at a young, young age? It was very decent. Yeah. Very decent. Remember, the royalties were paid quarterly. Okay. So as they paid quarterly, you know that you would be earning your 1,000 mm. because it had to move from the 600 at some point. Of course. So then it goes to 1,000. But you know that uh, in a quarter you would always be getting 50, mm. 100. From Those days was a lot of money. That's money for <laughs> life. Yeah. And it just know? comes in. It just comes in after four, after four uh, for months. Way of doing nothing but living no, your life. No, not of, of doing nothing. Yes. Of being a salesman, but when they see you, they trigger the they brand. triggered by the 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 the, yes. the boot to yeah. say hey yes the man let me buy this boot maybe i'll score that gold that he scored yesterday you know yeah. and the biggest sales time were december time and easter yeah. when they buying boots for their kids when they go into the mm -hmm. villages yeah. you know and it, it it worked it was a good relationship in fact i i was and i am still mm. blessed that uh, they sponsored me and also helped my youngsters out. Mm. School sport attire can be expensive. Of course. So they help them out. And you know, these guys are playing everything. Sure. They play rugby, they Hockey. play cricket, they play. <laughs> then they would just supply them with that. Yeah. I, mean, I could have spent a fortune on those things. Mm. So then it's also helping on the sales side or the business side mm. because it's indoctrination. Of course. Now they want nothing else but Adidas. But, Adidas. <laughs> but then becomes a very interesting coincidence that one of my youngsters became an Adidas and he is still mm. an Adidas ambassador but on the <laughs> classic side. Okay. But his deal is not with Johannesburg like me. It's, it's with US. We're <laughs> in New York. And Whoa. I'm thinking, wow. You know? <laughs> He's talking uh, dollars. Can you spare me some different <laughs> styles now? <Yes. laughs> you know? Do you know, something that stands out about all of that is how you guys were 
players. And that's why you use the word when I was working for Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah. Because uh-huh. to you guys, it was nearly span. Yeah, it was work, nearly span. But uh, once you start looking at playing as playing, mm. <laughs> you will always be playful. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you look at it as work, you have to work. Yeah. And why I say work? Because you need to win. Like any work needs production and needs uh, returns Mm -hmm. at the end. And our returns were the trophies and what we were getting in terms of bonus. Because Mm. if you don't win trophies, you can't expect bonuses from where, you know. So I remember the late Raila Mfukeng used to say, Guys, remember when I was in the details. Now, we are going to be a little opponent. Oh. And it's a little he, he used to say a lot about swallows mm. because they would dribble us and then we'll win. <laughs> oh, you know, they will look so good. Mm. You know, you know that ball possession they thing. They played uh, well, they played but they well. lost the game. Yeah. Oh, hell. And then our attitude was. We just need to make sure that we win trophies. <laughs> and we did, <laughs> yeah. fortunately. And that's when you work. Mm. And where I see that uh, we were thinking differently was with uh, one bad, mm. bad coach. The worst imported coach I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. It was Cho- coached Kaiser Chiefs at the yes, time. Yes, Orlando Casares. Yes. The guy had no clue. You mm. know? So he took a picture with Maradona and he said I was coaching this team and then he was believed and then he came and coaches <laughs> I've never seen anything like that so he's the only coach that we won two trophies without him being part of that of the coaching of the coaching he gets every time because obviously he's got a contract so mm. he's like guys we can't get rid of this person <laughs> and the only way to get rid of him is to drag our feet. You know, we yeah. to deploy the Jesa coach. That's it. No, yeah. we didn't think that way. Yeah. That's why I call it work. We were thinking, how best can we do well without him? Mm. Because we are now into this good habit of winning. And the strategy that uh, Ryder came with was, team talk is at one. Let's have our team talk in my room as a captain mm. at 12. And we would plan the game and <laughs> in our lingo. Yes. And when the guy calls us, we sit in there and then some of us end up sleeping. Because you know your plan. <laughs> yes. Whoa. You know, and that's how he won those trophies that year. <laughs> and, and he thought he won the oh, trophies. Oh, no, I'll never forget what he said uh, after scoring and winning the trophies. This is exactly what I tell you. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, you're telling us nothing. <laughs> You talk, we don't listen. <laughs> we don't listen. <laughs> Jeez, because mm. you know something about, because about, there was an era of soccer players who were teachers. Never span and then by Ruta and Nebali. You know, the era of, of soccer players who had full time jobs. And, and you just reflected on that time almost mm. like it was common. It was obvious. No, a case in point was uh, Bulli Hoku, mm. who was a teacher, Sylvester Kole, who yes. was a teacher. <laughs> Radam Fuking was the head in uh, in the department uh, somewhere in the laboratory for DBS yes. right here at uh, uh, what's this <clears throat> sorry amalgam mm-hmm. yeah New Canada they call it yeah, amalgam. amalgam area so a lot of us were full-time, full-time jobs, jobs and jobs. working yeah. here I've, I worked with Chipamala Teddy at uh, Premier Milling <laughs> <you know? laughs> and we had the Shane McGregor's who were also working for. Uh, other companies like uh, Ambro and mm. uh, Neil and Mark Tovey were working. Mark was head of uh, Reebok at some point, you know. <laughs> and in the afternoon, we go to, you go training. Uh, to training. Weekend, you play the game. We play the game. So we are not full time, but also. You're not full time soccer players. Not full time soccer players. Yeah. And uh, it was one's choice to do nothing, mm. you know. Which you could. Which we could. Yes. And some would, indeed, mm. you know. But uh, it. Obviously, doesn't give you what I have just shared earlier. That's you know? true, and it teaches you to hang in there. Mm. I mean, who everyone would uh, who would come back from work and want to relax, you know, read a newspaper, or chase it. And I think that's the old-fashioned and that they were good to go to go kitcheny, be the most to most to lose a thing. You know, it doesn't work like that. No, yeah, if you want to be different yes. and progressive. And what happens to Ntwana A now? Who signs for Chiefs? Daddy is happy that uh, finally my boy plays for my team. Were you immediately absorbed into the system or walked in Ulintwana and struggled to make it to the top? I struggled. Uh, struggled in terms of 
getting getting into game the team. time. Game yeah, time. game time. I spent three months training, mm. but not playing. But earning a salary. Earning a salary. At least. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yes. you know? But again, you when you have a successful mind, you are not thinking that way. Mm. You want to play. Of course. That is why it would hurt me when I would say to you as a boss and say, mm. but uh, Mr. Mashabela, I... The team is not winning, but I'm not playing. Mm. I feel I can help. I say, but I'm paying you. That yeah, would be the worst be, statement, yeah, you know, yeah. because I don't get recognition from play, uh, being paid. Mm -mm. I'm, <laughs> I'm here I'm to, help, here the team to help the team because yeah. I'm part of this team that That's is true. struggling. Yeah. When it's not struggling, it's fine. You can always swap us around. But I got there when Chiefs wasn't struggling, but also had uh, moments of uncertainty mm. where... You have Jan Malomboli Shaba just back Ooh. from Portugal, and then uh, you've got. Is it uh, that squad? Oh, and then you've got the late uh, Good Enough Nkomo mm. just arriving, and then Shaka Ngobo, yeah. and then Waga Waga Dikobe would uh, be on a break, a wall, <laughs> when he likes. <laughs> was he like that? Oh, he was like that. Huh? <laughs> and then that's when I got a break. Yeah. So, Waga Hayo, let's see you. And then it was on the 12th of April. 1981, we played against Leicester City at El Dorado Stadium. Mm. And I scored in my debut. But I'll never forget <laughs> what happened that day. Yeah. So I was warming up. The stadium was packed. And as I was warming up, the guys were looking at their heroes. And mm, Bojan Malumbu. Bola, Bo Malumbu. <laughs> and the, the guys were just uh, like stretching their necks. But, oh, man, you say talent to me. I'm so good. Far away. Oh, no. I run now. And then I got in. Hey, the soccer fans can be really <laughs> harsh. Eh? <laughs> and then I got in wearing jersey number seven that was worn by uh, the late Pele Blask. Sure. And it was rested until I came in. You came in. And then uh, I scored. Mm. And then they started saying, Who are you number seven? I was alone. I was alone. Who are you for now? And then I made sure that I don't look at what I did. Mm. I must look forward to what I should do. Wow. And the lesson that I can share with you and the, the viewers mm. is that uh, in life, do not count the number of games that you've won. Win the ones that count. Yeah. And you'll realize that everyone counts. Yeah. And if you look back and say, I've scored, I've done this, I've done that, you'll never be a better player. Mm. So I would bump into fans that says, hey man, you don't understand. <laughs> then Naban That's true. You know? That's I'm true. working here. Yes. You can't say gay tusa because I'm working here. Because you scored. What do I do? I'm a tusa. I was a core, I'm a core. And then, no, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. But then that's when you again sit back and realize that the only way to keep scoring is not to read the headlines. No. You just make them. And move on. That's if you've scored two, look for the third next week. You yes. know, say, let me score a head trick. Yes. You know, that kind of a thing. Whoa. But uh, it's the positive attitude that fortunately got me to have a history that I look back with pride in the game. Because the worst thing is to score goals over the weekend. Then first thing in the morning on Sunday, instead of going to church, then I'm going to buy a newspaper <laughs> what and born? read it the whole morning and end up uh, being hit by a car. You want to see yourself <laughs> in the <laughs> paper. Why you want to see yourself? You know, you were there. Yes, you, know? you saw the game. I saw the game. You know? <laughs> and it also helps with the attitude of you having or developing an, alti an attitude towards the media guys. Mm. That's mm. why I ended up uh, where I was in media. Yes. Because... Uh, and, and on radio and television. And all that. Yes. Because you don't read... I can tell you that one or two people wrote one or bad things. Of course. But... Never wanted to read it. Mm. I read it once and thought, mm -mm, I don't need this. Maybe you not. know what happened that time? I was on a red card. Mm. I was home. I was watching the game on TV. Yeah. And the uh, Dynamo's lost. And the headlines on the famous Monday newspaper was... Even with Max Maponyani, they couldn't win. And <laughs> like I was home. With me at home. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So then that, that's when you realize, that, no, this guy wasn't at the game. Yeah. Because he knows the squad, but he wasn't at work. He, he but, spoke only about the guy who wasn't there. Uh, you know? <laughs> so that's, uh, those are the lessons you learn. And you think, okay, instead of 
reading this and competing and going to the guy and say, but what did you write about me? Said, no, rather be there and mm, score. Mm. And he'll say, he's return. I said, but return from what? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. You know? Do you know, the, the highlights of that time, what comes to mind, is there a game that stands out for you during the, your first time as a player? One thing I've learned about soccer players and sports people generally, mm. your memory is sharp. It's so sharp because, and I like this, you've just confirmed it. Your perspective of the game is inside the field. Yes. That's why you remember, uh, Mark Williams will remember the goal yes. uh, that he scored in Belgium. Mm. <laughs> or no, it came from Mang and mm. it got to Mang and then I hit it and it went in. And he's like, whoa. So you guys do that. You remember those moments so well because you were in it. What stands out about that era of your soccer career, the beginning stages? Uh, it was the big ones in particular. Which what uh, is big at the, that time? The, what chiefs? I mean, uh, uh, chiefs pirates. Pir no, chiefs pirates is. and chiefs swallows. Of course, the Soweto teams. Oh. Is. I mean, not only there. I'm playing against my schoolmates, my yes, peers. Of course. Then on Monday, who's a hero at school? <laughs> <laughs> you competed to be the hero at school uh, as well. Yes, that was interesting. But not only that. Yeah. And some club bosses also don't realize. And it's not their fault that uh, school sport is not happening anymore. Mm. You know, those games were packed mainly because of the majority of the students ah, from our school. They wanted to see they you They wanted guys. to see us because they can identify. You know, that's they the biggest They go to advantage. class with you. Yes, and I know him. I'll talk to him about this, you know. And we were the boy next door, yes. kind of. Uh, so the Soweto teams, were the, the rivalry was always very strong. Oh, yes. Way back in those very, days. Very strong. Yeah. You know? And uh, then came moments where you play against pirates. I mean, the will to win. Mm. If you remember that uh, first yes. uh, movie yes. <laughs> of football. Uh -huh. I mean, those are the memories that one uh, have. And uh, the one that I'll also not forget was the last Man State Cup final. Mm -hmm, we played cool. against Amazul. Yeah. And uh, the late Jack Chamangwani played the ball from, he received it from Jengos Pereira, played it to Jack, and Jack played it long. Mm. And we were talking about it in the change room, that this goalkeeper likes leaving his line, ah. the Amazulu guy. Mm. And I was just on the D line. I mean, that's Come far. On. That's, that's, far. that's far from, and he from him. And left yeah. his line. Ooh. And I glanced at him before I got to the ball. And as I got to the ball, I flicked it further. Mm. The guy obviously noticed that this thing is just over <laughs> him. He just turned and looked at it. It was gone. Straight into the back of the net, Ooh. one nil, the last historical a uh, cup game yeah, yeah, after mainstay. mainstay have been sponsored for so long and that's one you of those you scored the last goal of the tournament <laughs> of the mainstay tournament oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. that's a big deal yeah, so it, it, it was a big deal because it's a cup game. Those mm. games will be shown over and over again. Yes. and uh, That goal will be shown over, over and over and again. Over. I mean, you can recall that uh, the recent World Cup uh, and, uh, in Qatar, mm. before then, Leading to that and uh, during yeah. on the other channel, the guys would still show us the World Cup from 86 <laughs> and <laughs> I know, all that. I know. And that's the advantage of yes. scoring in the Cup final. Yeah. My biggest game of the career that I will never forget, though, was the Cup final again mm -hmm. in the sales house. We played against the uh, Rangers, okay. men in Rangers, uh. in Durban, packed uh, King Smith Stadium. And... I scored a hat trick. Sure. It's not easy to score a hat Never. trick in a cup final. Uh -uh. I mean, everybody made a fuss about uh, Kaylen Mbappe mm. scoring a hat trick. You know, it's and it's when impossible. he scored the hat trick, I mean, when last was a hat trick scored <laughs> yeah. in a cup final? So it, it's it's always very rare. I think, and I stand to be corrected. The last player to score a hat trick in a cup final was uh, the late filmer singer. Yes, you know? Wow, <laughs> you know? that's it such was a long time ago. Top eight. That's such and, a long. Uh, when he was playing for for Downs, for Cosmos, for Cosmos, for Cosmos. Even. That's I remember. even early yeah. in his career, yeah. not even late in his yes, career. Yes, you know. Whoa. Yeah, so that's <laughs> that's what cup finals do. Yeah. They they bring out the best they, as they, well. They bring a lot of nerves, mm. and it's not often you find hat tricks in it. Yeah, because. Uh, Personally, I've never been a fan of cup finals. Because, <laughs> Why not? No, because uh, having played this game for both sets of teams, mm. you'll realize that the same players 
are different. Mm. You get nervous. It's a fact. <laughs> when the referee blows that whistle, you go to the toilet when you come from it <laughs> and nothing comes out because you, you don't want to put your foot wrong. Yeah. Imagine scoring an own goal in a cup final. <laughs> you know? and Imagine getting a red card in a cup final. You feel card. like you, left, you yes. let the team down. So all those things, you, they play in your mind yeah. and then you feel different because it's the ultimate. And not until you play a lot of them. Then over the years... You then, get used to the yeah, feeling. No, no, bring, them, they bring them on. <laughs> you know, who are we in the final with this time? Yes. And already we were edging the opponents mm. with the advantage, which was a fair advantage. Yeah, <laughs> fair because we won all our games to Prior reach the to finals. That, yeah. We built that confidence. Yeah? Let's talk about Kaiser Chiefs. Then, the brand... This massive, massive brand. Kaiser Chiefs, your dad supported it. Obviously, he didn't decide to support it the day, two weeks before, three weeks before. That means the brand was there already. It's a 70s brand in South Africa. That one that we've known and celebrated for so long. Mm -hmm. And you became a part of it. What is your identity or, and your perception of that brand? And you can say then and now, it's not that important for me because the stature of the brand is still as big as it was then. What is your identity? When you see it, what do you see? What do you feel? What emotion do you connect with this, the Kaiser Chiefs brand? The emotions that uh, one has about that is uh, looking back at the days when uh, Iwat Nene was in charge mm. and uh, the way he had uh, the gig of the game, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he would say everything that would sell you that team. Yeah. And then you look at Kaiser meticulously dressed, the, the ball bottom days, those mm -hmm. days, and then you look at the team. Now you go to the likes of uh, Piuk Makwati yeah. and you go to the likes of uh, the, the big guys those days, your Pele Blaski that I've mentioned, Chuchu. your Sugar Mguyo. Mm. And you think, wow. Little pro, a bra, team. pro, pro. Ariel Pro Kwani. Yes, yes. And then uh, El Kim Pro Kumalo, yes. Doctor's father, yes. who was the one that was our coach and collecting me from school <laughs> every <laughs> afternoon. To come and to train. To come and train. So you look at those people Play, uh, th those players of those days and they were just gentlemen mm. and you think wow I'll be part of these gentlemen Jeez. I mean you know the story yes. about Chiefs and Pirates those days and you just choose which way you want to go <laughs> so you want to go the bell bottom way and the, the gentleman side the gentleman all side. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and uh, it was also entrenched by the love mm. that I could see in the house and I'm thinking this man, what is he seeing in this team? <laughs> and remember, there were no TVs those days? No. And the guy had a picture of them from radio. From radio. <laughs> you know? Watla Kayon. Watsena. You know? Watla Kayon. Those sounds. <laughs> those sounds, you know. And to an extent that, uh, you know, to be old. Sorry, this reminds me of uh, the old man. Mm. So then I played for Chiefs. We played against the uh, Bush Bucks in mm. Durban. Mm. I was still at school. And uh, remember, he knows my history. Mm. So he forgot or chose to forget that uh, I have stopped doing that. I'm in class all the time. Mm. So then he thought, I must be vigilant because he's in matric and he might lose sight <laughs> and uh, not finish school. So we played in Durban against Durban Bushbucks. And it was one of those days where the game starts at 8 and finishes at 10. Mm. And uh, we're on a midnight flight back. Back home. Yeah, so... Yeah. Nowadays, there are no midnight flights of those nations. Eh? I'm not even sure what yeah. they do now. Yes. So we are on the midnight flight. So I got back home. He knew that we were playing mm. the following day. So he was listening to the game <laughs> on the radio. You're meant to be at school. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's after school oh, up, yes. and the Chiefs is playing at okay. night. Okay. And okay. I was yes, picked up by school and uh, to the taken to the, to the game. So come back on a midnight flight mm. and got home at about 20 past 12 something yeah. like that in the evening and I knocked and the old man who didn't open and I was talking to him through the keyhole <laughs> time <laughs> no 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 not in my house you know but what was his problem I no I should have long been back how though because you were playing so far exactly my point so the old man where he started opening is uh no, I'm from Durban. No, 
you wouldn't be coming from Durban. Why was the commentary so clear on radio? <laughs> It's like from Devon, it mustn't be that clear. <laughs> so you must have been at Orlando. <laughs> you need to tell me where you come wow. from. <laughs> and then that's how you finally open. For a time, no. it's a fair. It's a fair. It's a radio. It's a radio. It's a radio. Wow. Your time at Chiefs, how long was that time? Uh, ten years. Two. Ten years. And uh, I can't say it's ten regretted wasted years Gosh, no, no, yo, yo, yo. No. it's 10 years you bring years. a political statement <laughs> sorry I didn't 10 wasted not years there. No, not yes, I, you I, did I, I didn't mean anything <laughs> so uh, those 10 years were always the years that I can or are still the years that I can look back mm. with pride and say I've ran my race at Kaiser Chiefs and I know you played for other teams but were they your, your 10 best soccer years they, they were they yeah. definitely were. And obviously culminated by the fact that uh, they are the ones that groomed me mm, and of uh, made me to be recognized yeah. by other teams subsequent to that. That's true. Yeah. In that time, you've mentioned a lot of players and that's the beauty about the soccer, soccer players' brains. They remember soccer player names. Yeah. Obviously, they're fellow, they're colleagues. Yeah, unless if your head has hit against the pole that's, too often. Oh, yeah, that's a <laughs> crisis. <laughs> a goal. <laughs> Which players became superstars to the Max Maponiano level at that time? Just, just whoever you remember. Of course, you played with Doctor, but who do you remember? No, uh, Doctor, when... <laughs> When remember I say doctor's father was collecting me from school? Yeah. When doctor's father was a coach, doctor would walk into the change room with short pants with elastic here yeah, and one pocket at the back. You remember those? I know those pants. pants. No, yes. he was crampelini yeah, nyana so. Tiny little boy <laughs> when I was there. So he wasn't playing. He wasn't playing at the time. Yeah. But when towards the end of my career, that's at when Chiefs. he joined yes, us. At yes, Chiefs, at yeah. Chiefs. But. Uh, Doctor wouldn't even be mentioned with that generation no. before. I mean, we had uh, a player that was amazing, Fudua Mkotet. And we had uh, Shaka Ngop. I mean, you think of Shaka Ngop. Let me rattle the names first Let's before go. I Let's even go. talk yes. about Shaka Ngop. Yes. We had Shaka Ngop. We had uh, Tine Islatla, of one of the best players that everybody, when they talk yeah. about Messi and Neymar, I'm thinking, I've seen this live on the pitch, mm, you know. Mm. Then Jengels Pereira. Yo. And you look at those players, Sabilon Sputlan Slap. Yeah. I mean, a player would have an asset and he uses it, you know, <laughs> deep in the shoulder, yes. deep in the shoulder all the time. And... We had a star-studded team. Yeah. Yeah. And even the man that was doing the most damage, but quietly so, mm. Sylvester Gole. Yeah. You know, we had all those guys. Sure. And from generation to generation, we had players that would amaze me. Shaka Ngobo, I was, in fact, uh, not Shaka at this time, uh, Waga Waga Dikwe. Mm. I thought, I'm a substitute, but I don't think I'll play. When this guy receives the ball from one of the best goalkeepers in in that uh, era, era yes. uh, Peter Balak. Peter Balak, of course. Gets the ball, Peter. He throws this ball onto your path mm. while you're on the run. And it's part of the decision and planning, mm. magic planning, yeah. to say we suck the opponents, we bring them to the halfway line. And then you... I will throw it behind them. Yeah. And you go in and turn. Mm. Even today and since then, I've never seen a player that bends the run like uh, like, like, uh, like Waga, Waga Waga used yes. to. The man that started doing that was uh, Fani Matita. Mm, and that's the secret of any striker. You've got to bend your runs. Yes. Know when to be in line with the defender, but don't run to the ball, mm. but run inside to go out. To get the ball on the other side. And you know what is the danger that I've learned, uh, I've learned throughout, and I can share this with any youngster who plays football. Mm. The runs that you don't want to make are the ones that will make you a better player. Yeah. And no player wants to go there before he gets there. They all want to go to the ball first. Yes. But you don't realize that when you go there, you bring the defender with you, and then your intention is... True. So your second destination is more important than, than your, your first. first one. So they have to realize that. And Waga and Fani used to do that one. But on the 10, Waga would hit that thing while it's bouncing. Even at <laughs> training, he would just volley things anyhow. <laughs> I mean, you would think he was using a tennis record. Yes. And no player since Waga 
has done there. Shaka Ngobo. Yeah. I mean, those players used to have different personal attributes. Mm. Shaka Ngobo would run with the ball at speed. Not speed, but top speed. Pushing it. But while pushing it, yeah. he's just changing <laughs> left, right, left, right. When the opponent comes to the right, Dribbles. he puts it to the left. But then when you on the left, he puts it to the right. But at top speed. But he would shoot. Yeah. And I'll never forget uh, with that uh, trick of his coming from the halfway line, running at top speed at opponents. We played against the uh, Vets in a cup final. Mm. That's in cup final. And the the public announcement uh, manager <laughs> said, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the replay will be on Wednesday. Mm. And Shaka Ngobo was coming with the ball from the halfway line and he took a shot and uh, uh, Peter Osmouth, uh Peter Osmouth, mm. the goalkeeper, dropped the ball and I put it in the back of the net yeah. from that rebound. And the, the 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 stadium announcer said, "Ladies and gentlemen, there's no more replay." <laughs> <laughs> that was on the last minute and the last shot of it's the over, game. It's, it's over. It's over. So they already announced the Horde Game Maker. The Horde Game Maker Wednesday replay you know, <laughs> at the same venue. Wow. So that's how lethal Kaiser Chiefs was. Teenage Lala, I mean, the only player that would get the ball from the goalkeeper's hands. From in the six yard box or mm. penalty spot, yes, and dribble everybody <laughs> and go all the and way, even dribble the, the opposition <laughs> goalkeeper in one game. He repeated that they played against the when I say they, yes. it was a year when I was signed but could not play oh, because okay. of the window period, okay. So, okay. uh, we played against the Jungles Pereira's team, Debens, uh, Cape Town City, mm. and Chiefs in a cup game. Chiefs was one nil down and the fans of Chiefs were leaving mm. with about three, it happens three or four minutes it doesn't happen anymore yeah. as much yeah, where well. you start seeing people walking out yes. in the last 10 minutes of the game yeah because they always hope <laughs> yeah. yeah as the fans were leaving yeah I will never forget that scene I was sitting on the east no western side of mm. the Orlando Stadium yeah and the Guys were walking slowly back home, no dust, nothing. Mm. Teenage Lala got the ball from the hands of the goalkeeper, dribbled everybody, <laughs> put it in the back of the net, the best goal I've ever seen in a long time. Yeah. Dribble everybody. <laughs> <laughs> including the opponent's goalkeeper. <laughs> including the opponent's goalkeeper. Patrick Horsmouth mm. was the goalkeeper at uh, the time. And then the fans heard the few that remained screaming, we remained. Mm. And I turned like this on the stands. I've just seen a great lounge of were, fans running, running back, back to see <laughs> to, what's going to on. To see what happened. Because they knew with that scream, it means it's an equalizer. Yes. And then they came back. <laughs> and first half went, second half of extra time. Of extra time. Teenage did exactly the same. How's that for the reminiscence of what you did by waiting for the second half mm. to get it from the same end and, where, and go to that? Wow. Not like this time he scores in the other goals. No, the, uh, the same goals. I've never seen a carbon copy of a goal like that. Yeah, and I, that's I, I, like, <laughs> give it to me. I'll, I'll do this again. And Chiefs won 2-1 in that cup game. What? And that guy to play with him was just something else. Yeah. Gets the ball quiet, very quiet. Mm. But uh, when he gets onto the field, he will hear him. Hey, hey, hey. He says, yeah, oh, a very soft voice, tiny, tiny voice, voice, you know. <laughs> hey, lad, tell her, hey, lad, tell her. <laughs> and he would get the ball and start uh, sticking out his tongue. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if the opponents were following the tongue or, or the what? body or the ball, but he was just a genius. Yeah. Hugging the line. And I've seen the likes of Aster Komani and uh, mm. the then uh, best defender, Habula Joss, yeah. Oscar Lamini, who would just be flying and teenagers would just go <laughs> just past. passing them. So this particular day, they, they used to call him Botsozo. Yeah, Sasha. of course. So, so. <laughs> so you can imagine a packed stadium. What fans don't know what we go through. Yeah, It's a packed stadium. Call it 50, 60,000 people yeah. at Orlando Stadium. The man receives the ball. And from the halfway line, on the line, mm. on the, that is on the byline. Of course. And he takes these guys on, <laughs> and I'm making a run. And 50,000 people go, so, 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 yes. so, so, so. Yes. Now, I'm new in the team. Mm. He's my hero. I'm playing with him. 
He dribbles past everybody. I got into the box. He plays across. Then I'm still saying, so, so, so. <laughs> and this ball goes past. <laughs> oh, I'm big, man. Can I pull it? <laughs> <laughs> you were watching the game no, like was, a fan. I, I was there live like a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, it's the first year. I like that. I'm I'm live like that. with oh, this I'm guy. Big, <laughs> 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 Do you know, the, ta- the talent of the game at the time It's special. When you watch Ntwana say, uh, particularly in the UK, mm. when you see a lot of these documentaries and they start playing, when you check the the history of Bo, uh, Lionel Messi and all mm. of that, you can tell they've been playing since they were since kids. Young. And yes. almost almost in the professional teams, but obviously playing at amateur level. Yes. So they, they got the training. Mm. We, you guys didn't have that. No, we didn't have, we didn't have that. In fact, when you say that, uh, I was watching the Santander... Promising, they call mm. it promising Santander. Yeah. It's a beautiful concept with uh, with the Spanish uh, league. Mm. Remember, the Spanish league is sponsored by Santander, ah, so yes. they get them in under 13s and under 15s. Mm. And I saw some good football there and From very normal post match interviews. I mean, if you teach these people interviews at this age and men of the match give them trophies yes. and they not play full field. They play from 18 to okay, 18, yes, you know? yes. and the youngsters, they want to express themselves. But also what excited me was to see the Ronaldo's son, uh, Marcelo's son. Listen to and that. All the players you can think of uh. who's got boys in the, fa- in the family. They, they, they play soccer. Because they have now felt that, wow, dad is doing a good thing. Mm. And... Then also the resemblance would be, yeah, yeah, would you be fascinating. Like, hey, and I'm thinking... You're a young Messi. <laughs> you're a young... <laughs> that's a miniature trophy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because yeah. okay. for me, that's the one thing that's missing about our soccer. The nurturing from a kid. And, and yet you guys became superstar soccer players without any of that. No, no. Natural, does that say something about South Africa's natural talent? Then? We do. We do have a natural talent and uh, you can always see with these off-season matches. Yeah. Uh, here and there, they just need guidance. Mm, I mm. mean, who wants to lie flat and let opponents <laughs> score? I mean, these are things that... And I've always said you cannot... Did you, you criticize that as well? No, no, no. <laughs> you didn't no, like I, I, I'm old-fashioned. Yeah. I would criticize anything that does not resemble mm. football. Ugrutman. Yeah, but also I'm realistic to <laughs> the fact. Yeah. yeah, the last time we were in the World Cup was what, 2002? That's true. You know? Yeah. And this is the reason why. You're Because saying we don't have time for this. We don't have this. time for this. Yeah. It has taken us no, no way. Mm. So we should discourage that. Yeah. I mean, when you put both knees on the ball, what are you saying? <laughs> And then you round the ball. It's round already. You climb on top of the you, ball. <laughs> why are you just doing all the funny things? Get this thing, do a trick that gets you out of trouble. True. And also for the benefit of the team and for the collective. Mm. And put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. You know, and those are the things that I always urge coaches to emphasize. And uh, when given a chance, like I was given a chance in one or two, uh, on one or two occasions by mm. a few companies, and uh, when I trained these youngsters, mm. I'll never forget uh, the first day. Now these youngsters are a different breed. <laughs> Now they. Yeah, Max will be coaching them, and I was not even coaching them. I was running clinics. Yeah, but then. Running clinics towards the tournaments, okay. the off-season tournaments, mm. because when there's a winter break, the, we get them to play. Yeah, but in a format of schools. Okay, gotcha. because we still need their teachers to know This who is, is what's not happening. coming, who is coming. Yes, where is why is uh, mm. Mashabela not, not here? There. You know? yes. So these youngsters, first day I introduced myself, they were in jerseys, mm-hmm. and the numbers are in the front. Hey, my daughter. And then I'm thinking, okay, guys, uh, why is the V at the back? He says, ah, coach, it's just to say it's me who scored. No, no, no. <laughs> you need to learn the first touch before you even think of scoring. <laughs> <laughs> They want can, you to see. <laughs> can you all dress properly? Let's start there. <laughs> you know? Jeez, so, say sense, yeah. I mean, we used to tag in, you know, yes. tag in and look like someone who's at work. Yes, you know? they tag in. Properly. Yes. You know, <laughs> you at work, you yeah. know, look like someone, you can't be coming to the office with the shirts all over no, the show. Of course, show, you of know? course. You at work, you're getting paid for this. Make Jeez. it a business. 
Yeah. yeah, you know, when you talk about South Africa's natural talent, there is no training. We don't get taught tricks. No. We don't get taught to dribble. They're natural. They're natural. They're natural. I mean, you look at, uh, I'm also not going to end with the Chiefs players. I'm thinking of the likes of Daniel Ramaruzzi, mm. uh, Calvin Peterson, Mlungi mm. Singubane, amazing. Ukungwane. Ace Mnini. Ukungwane. Ukungwane. Yes. You know, I mean, Ace Mnini would do something that everybody says, no, uh, Neymar, you can't do that. <laughs> the way you flip the ball, the ball and, and, the, and bring it this you know, side. I remember last time when he was still playing for Barcelona, an opponent almost killed him. He just choked him. So you can't <laughs> do that. But Ace Mnini would do that regularly. Yeah. But uh, this moment where he did it was for the good of the team. Mm. So we're sitting in the change room. We're planning and uh, we so entrenched about uh, Ace Mnin. No, he will do this. He will just jump the ball and take it. And then when he s slows down and takes off, mm. that's when I will assist you. Yeah. So this is the discussion between Raida Mufukeng and Steve Masek. Buri, he, we, he comes from uh, with Bank Aces. Okay. So, uh, Poka, uh, when I'm Fuke, when he comes with the ball and starts slowing down, that's when you pounce, mm. and I will cover you. I just he'll knock it, and I will cover you. Yeah. So he agrees. <laughs> uh, it was a plan. Yes. So we laugh because you know that's how he plays. No, we're laughing at them. Yeah. That's how he plays. Uh. So your teenage and us are laughing at them. Say, hey, wow. you've got a <laughs> challenge to uh, this afternoon, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so then we're thinking, but Ace Menini, you can't stop him. Yeah. So they had the plan. Ryder is here. <laughs> Ace Mnini is coming with the ball. Buri is here. He's just free to... He's free to yeah. cover. Yeah. If he knocks the ball here, then he sweeps. And Ace Mnini, that day, he just surprised them. Mm -hmm. He puts the ball here and then he stops. Fakes a run yeah, and stops. Okay. And Ryder does this. <laughs> and then Steve behind him says... Again, fella. Yes, and yes, yes. Fella. Yeah, fella. Fella. So as in again, again. You know? yeah. And he went. And as he comes, Ryder, Steve was ready to cover. Mm. But he doesn't see the ball because Ryder went for a tackle. Ace Mnini flipped, flipped the, ball the ball and went outside the pitch and back. <laughs> and he found the ball here. Yes, Steve was still waiting here <laughs> for the ball. <laughs> and he was doing uh -huh. that. And Ace was there, <laughs> gone. And at the time, he was whipping across. And I'm thinking... We all clapped as <laughs> opponents. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> wow. I mean, that's the fun we had. Yes. You play against opponents, but you love yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. They were dishing not only it for the opponent, I mean, for the fans, but also for us. As, as, as opponents in the field. I mean, he, I'll never forget such moments yeah. where at Ellis Park, we played in a JPS we playing this bush box that was stabbed on Mike Mangan. Mm, and oh. all those. <laughs> he goes to the corner flag, this um, Lungi mm, mm. And the defenders and everybody, but at speed. They're chasing him. They're chasing him, but he's not going to our poles. Mm. He goes to the corner flag. He wants to get across. Yeah, but you can't go there when the poles are here. Of course. <laughs> Where is he going? <laughs> Where is he going? I know as a fan, I must admit, as a fan at that moment, was like, Oh, yeah, guy. Oh, yeah, guy. Yes. 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 He was going towards the poles. He turned, he went towards the corner flag. Mm. And they were chasing him towards there. But as he was going towards the corner flag, they slowed down. And he did something very funny. He clipped the ball. He pushed it forward and he back heeled it, mm. but with pace. Sure. And that's when uh, young Peterson mm. came from Norway and headed the ball in. And I said, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I mean, we were just thinking, but how do you do that? Natural yeah, talent. Natural talent. Yeah, that is why when he was interviewed, when he, oh, after scoring in the in the one of the awards yeah. evening, they asked him about uh, the best goal that he scored, one of the best goals that he scored. He says, uh, <laughs> so, I'm a camera when I saw a young girl. I'm going to go to the Chiefs. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Live. <laughs> I'm a cool girl. <laughs> <shy. laughs> you know? But that's how talented that yeah. man was. And many more. Rama Rootsi weaving past. So, the moral of the story, though, is that 
the game then mm. had characters. True. And the fans would go to watch characters, yeah. not the team or the badge. Mm. And to add to the characters, you remember the Edin Katango of this world. Yeah. You remember the, the, the Shirwalis of this Ooh. world. You can't talk football then when and you don't talk about, talk about Shirwali. Yeah, of course. I mean, there's the Stylish guy player. Fortunately, I wasn't paying because I was a player, <laughs> so we used the cards. To get in, to Just watch him to play. Just to get him to watch him play yes. whenever Bloemfontein uh, Celtic is playing. Well, that's before in he, moved, he moved to Mamelodi. Yes. That's before he moved yeah. to Mamelodi. Yeah. Now, I would watch him. I'll never forget this night where he scored the goal. As you say, our memories sometimes are amazing. Yeah. You have to be there to have your memory <laughs> jog, chalked up, you know? Yeah. So this day they played, uh, they played uh, Rangers mm. at, uh, at, what's the stadium? The, the one down the road. Mm -hmm. So then the men in Rangers uh, home ground. Okay. And I wasn't going to miss that game for anything because <laughs> NS Shirwali is in was action. there. Yeah. Reed was there. James Mukonazi was there. Yes, yes. So this guy gets the ball from mm. outside the box. And the picture I'm going to paint is typical mm. of Waya Chirwali. He gets the ball from the goalkeeper. He looks up, he plays it wide mm. to the left. He makes a dash run to the right, comes back to collect it. Mm. He changes the ball, sprays it right across the pitch, and he goes there and collects it. Yeah. And he plays in the he plays it in the center. <laughs> I mean, how can you be a midfield <laughs> marshal like that? Yes. He plays it in the center for Reed to stop it and roll it. Mm. And he lashes it. He could shoot out of the box. He scored the best goal. Yes. But when we Talk about a one-man orchestra. But that, was to him. me, was the best goal yeah. that he scored it's that like, I have ever seen. It's like watching the likes of uh, Zinedine Zidane, where people control the game. You know that he's the anchor of, of this game. So we've seen players <coughs> like that in South Africa with zero training, just natural talent. And that's where the argument comes from, to say, but you can't say, yeah, we've got to catch them at the age of 12, we've got to nurture them. There's nothing like that. Mm. There is only one thing. Whatever you do, you've got to love it and live it. Yeah. You can't do it part-time. <laughs> That's where no. the problem is. Yeah. I, my elder son, he was playing cricket on Saturdays. No, no, he was playing rugby or cricket yes. on Saturdays, <laughs> depending on the school program. Mm. And then Sundays, he plays for vets. Soccer. Satur soccer. Yeah. Saturday... At rugby, they t tell him to come closer. It's a scrum. Of course, yeah. And then Sunday, they tell him to go 10 meters apart. <laughs> and I said, no, nah, you're going to be space. confused. <laughs> to space. <laughs> For the space. I said, no, 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 no. That's not how we learn this thing. Uh -uh. You're not going to be a better one. player. Choose one. Yeah. You know? And they were always going to be under pressure because uh, their father is so-and-so. True. And as not bad as they were, the pressure was that uh, a lot would be expected of, of course, them. I mean, you know what happened to Kaiser Jr. You know what oh. happened to Bamusa and many Kaiser others. Kaiser Jr. delivered, though. We have to give no, it to him. No, but what I'm trying to say is in terms of, uh, in terms of expectations. Of course, yeah. And these I bet you it was the same for <coughs> Doctor as well. For Doctor. The dad you know? was superstar. Yeah, but, <laughs> but the, the, there comes a point where as adult as we are becomes... Uh, 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 or become uh, careless speakers. That's true. You know, yeah. and you say, "How uh, Yeah, like uh, you I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong you with know? you? Hey, sign your raro to babol. That's why I'm Papa. No, appreciate King Wana what's America. He's got only his uh, future yeah. to aim at. You know? King King David Studio Podcast.